Hi everybody, welcome to another video on how to make Power BI dashboards for Team Sports. Today we're going to be going through how to make a player report like the one you're seeing on my screen, which is going to be a longitudinal report. And it's going to enable you to select the range of data that you want to see. So if you want to look at a month full of data or if you just want to look at a week of data, you'll be able to select the, the data range for any player that you want to have in your reports. You're going to be able to see the most important metrics that you select as well as a total of the time period that you have selected. And finally, I'm going to show you how to import a player image that whenever you select a different player, it's going to select, uh, I'm going to show you the different image of that player. So today we're going to be using uh, your master data dump. So if you've seen my other previous videos, you'll see that this is the same Excel file that I've been using, which is simply my data dump from all of my GPS exports from training session and match, which is simply just copying and pasting it one after the other. So I have just one Excel database that is really quick and really useful for me because I don't have to waste time in, in doing different Excel sheets and different files or anything. This is all stored in one big database. So it's really easy and it's going to make everything quicker for you if you use a data dump like this one. So this is the Excel file that I'm going to import into my Power BI dashboard. Here we go. And in order to do my player reports, the first thing I'm going to do is just to put a big slicer on the top left that's going to have my player, player name. Very good. We're going to make that a bit big and clear on the top left. And we're going to go to the down arrow on the, on the box and select to be a drop down. So this is going to enable us to select exactly what player we're going to be uh, seeing in our report. One very important thing is to establish a filter that is going to be your drill title. And this filter, we're going to use the filtering tool of Power BI in order to make the drill title to always be full session. So if you have a database just like this one where you, where you keep all of your sessions including drills, it's really important that you put your filter as a as full session drill as a, as a page filter because this if, if you don't do this basically what you're going to be seeing in your dashboard is going to be a combination of different drills and it's going to add up different drills instead of just watching a full session value which is what you really want so make sure you do that at the beginning of your dashboard and, and now I'm just going to make a couple of changes to that slicer box just to make it a bit better looking just take the Header off, you don't need that. And I'm going to make the text size a bit larger. OK. Now, in for my next slicer, it's going to be the drill date selector. So I'm just going to put another slicer just under that one. I'm going to choose my session date in that field. That's going to enable me to select exactly what range of data I want to select for my player reports. So you might just want to be look at, if you want to look at one week, then you can just select that week that you want to see. If you want to look at one month, then you can just increase it a bit larger. And that's just going to enable, if you want to see the whole season, you can do that as well. So that's, that's a very good slicer tool that's going to allow you to select what range of, of data that you want to see in your reports. And if you want to go to a specific date, you can just go over here and select it. You can either type that in or select it in the calendar. So it's a very cool uh, slicer that I have there. So next would be, I'm just going to put uh, three or four graphs and visualizations here that are going to give me my most important information. So I want to keep my report down to just one page. And in that one page, I'm going to make the most of it. And I'm going to put the most important information for my club. Again, I'm just going to use examples, every, every team and every Every uh, sport has a different, different requirement, so just put whatever uh, variables that are most important for you. The first thing I'm going to put is the, my total distance. For that, I'm going to select an area chart. I think total distance, when you're looking at it over time, the best way to look at it is with an area chart. So for my uh, first axis, I'm going to use session date, which is going to be my x-axis drag that across to the axis box. And as you can see right now, 
it's, it's going to display year, quarter, month, and day, which is not the format I like. I'm, I'm just going to show you first how it looks like, just so that you know. And first, I'm going to select my total distance, which is going to be the main variable of the graph. And I'm going to drag that across two values. So as you can see, that doesn't really make much sense at the beginning. And that's because what I was saying, the session data is not in the correct format. So if you go find your access box, click on the down arrow, and it's going to be by default in date hierarchy. So just change that to session date. Perfect. And one more thing I want to do, as you can see, you're not really watching um, date by date. You can't really see what data point belongs to what date. So if I just reduce that a bit, you can even see that it's not really very clear. So again, you need to change the format of that date. So if you select your charts, come to format, go to your x-axis, and instead of continuous, you're going to change that to categorical. And that's going to allow you to view the data by date by date. So I imagine that this is, this is the way that you want to see your player report. If that's not the way, you can just leave that as continuous. But if you want to see a shorter range of dates, for example, and you want to see, OK, what did I do this week? You want to see uh, your microcycles. You want to see what I did in your match game, uh, match day minus 1, minus 2, on your match day, etc. You want to change that to be um, categorical. Next in, I'm going to use a different chart. I'm going to go for a high-speed run. And for that one, I am going to use my normal column chart. I'm going to put it right next to that. And I'm going to use high-speed running. That's my value and session date. That's my axis. Change that to session date and change that to categorical type. So now what I'm seeing here is my high speed running that I've done on each one of these days. And for my next chart, I'm going to use a line chart. The reason I'm going to use this chart is because I want to reflect in this chart, I'm just going to go for the max speed achieved. So again, get your session date into your axis and select max speed and put the enter values. Make the same changes that we've done before. Cool. So as you can see, I'm, I'm selecting different charts depending on what, what metric, what variable I want to reflect. So this is really important when you want to reflect your data. So it's not, always, it's not all about just putting a column chart for everything just because it's the simplest one. Sometimes you have to pick different charts to reflect better what data you're looking at. So total distance looks better with an area chart because not only you can see the distance that he reached at one point, but you can also have a visualization of the accumulative distance and the comparison between each day that you're doing. And the same with max speed. With max speed, there is no such thing as accumulating a max speed. It's just the max speed that you reach in a given day. So that's why they use the line chart, which actually better reflects the changes in max speed. And now I can see how I'm spreading my max speed drills and, and the way that my, my session is orientated toward achieving the max speed. You can actually see how you're doing in different sets of days. And even if you increase the range of days, you can even see if the player max speed is somehow going up with the season or if it's going down. So I think it's better, it's good to really pick what type of chart you use for each day. And finally, I'm going to use one more graph. For this one, I'm going to go for uh, axles and diesels. And I want to reflect that as a clustered column chart. So when it comes to axles and diesels, a lot of people like to view them either as one variable, as a combinative variable, like axles plus diesels. And some people like to watch them as different. So you can select if you want the clustered column chart or the stacked column chart. So select your session date for your x-axis again. And I'm going to go for accelerations, zones 3 to 6. 
and decelerations on the higher intensity zones. So the good thing, if you, if you use a, the cluster column charts, not only you can see the progression of your axles and diesels, but you can see if in a given session your drills were more orientated to a decelerative nature or accelerative nature. So you can even say on a given date, you can see that, oh, on this day my, my session, my drills definitely involved a lot of more axles and diesels, where on other days it was the opposite. So. Um, as we know, axles and diesels are completely different and they have a completely different impact on the body. So if you want to see the difference on the ratio axle to diesel of your session, go for the cluster, the cluster column chart. If you just want to see them as a full value, you can change it to stacked column chart. And that's going to give you the, both uh, axles and diesels if you just want to look at a neuromuscular fatigue. And now I'm going to make a few more changes just to make this look better because as you can see there's actually a lot of information, there's a lot of words, a lot of numbers in my graph and some, of, most of them uh, I don't need in my graph and it's just going to make it look uh, oversaturated with information. So I'm going to make a few changes for example to the access titles and to the, to the, to the chart titles as well. So first from the x-axis I'm going to toggle off the title of the axis. Same with the y-axis. I'm going to change the, the title of the charts just to say total distance. I'm going to do the same for all the other charts as well. Okay, and I am also going to toggle on all of the data labels for all of my graphs. Perfect. And finally, this is uh, completely optional, of course, uh, I'm going to change the colors of each graph so I have a different color in, in each one of my graphs. Okay, it's completely up to you again if you want to do that. I think it looks better if you have a, a different color for each, each metric. So that way you associate a color with a metric and you already know straight away what it is. And finally, one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, as you can see, some of the charts start at zero on the y-axis, but some of them don't. They actually start at a, at a different value. So in some cases you want them to start at zero, and in some cases you don't want them to start at zero. So this is a good example right here. So say total distance is a, is a graph that I, I would want it to start at zero on the y-axis, whereas max speed, I wouldn't really want to, to do it. The reason is that if I, if I don't start total distance at zero, in days like these, so in a day that I've, I've covered 2,000 meters, or 2.2, 2.5, and you can see the graph, it looks like he hasn't done anything at all, and that, that doesn't reflect the information that I want to that I want to provide. So if you see this graph without looking at the data labels, you might actually think that there's an incredibly large difference between each day. So this looks like it's uh, six, seven times higher than this one, where it's actually three times as much. And on the days that I've, did, that I've done 2.7K or 2.5, that's still a fair amount of distance. It's not like he didn't do anything at all. So I want to change this one to actually start at zero. So I just have to come to format, y-axis, and in start, I'm going to change that to zero. So not, not only it reflects better the low day types, but you can also see sort of the accumulative distance that the player is having by the area under the graph. In max speed, it's not the same. In max speed, as you can see, some days where it's really low, so on, a, on this day, for example, the, the speed is 17.6. That's the max speed that the player achieves on that day. And that is actually really low. So I'm, I'm happy with that being reflected at the very bottom of the graph because that is not a max speed at all. That's, I would say, like a quick jog. Not even, not even high-speed running, so I, that, that's why I'm happy with the way that this is. 
instead of the total distance, you can see the difference between both. So you can either leave that as it is, which by default is going to be left at auto, or you can even say your own uh, start number of the y-axis. So I can leave that as auto, or maybe I will I'll put the, the start of my x-axis as the lowest high speed, max speed that I can imagine. So say 15 would be sort of the lowest high max speed that I would expect my player to, to achieve in a, in a session. So you can either set your own or leave that as auto, up to you. And finally, I'm gonna insert a small summary table at my bottom left that is going to reflect the accumulation of the variable in that selected range of dates. So for that, I'm going to insert my multi-row card visualization. So select the multi-row card, put that across on the bottom left of your dashboard. I'm going to introduce in this visualization the same metrics that I have in my other charts. So total distance, the first one. I'm gonna select that, so as you can see, I'm gonna leave that as a sum. So what I wanted is I wanted to show the sum of all these different days that I have. So in this case, I'm looking at a week full of data. So this is my week microcycle from match to match. So I wanted to leave that as a sum, so it displays me the total distance that the player accumulated during that week, or if it's a month that I'm seeing, well, the total distance of that month. And I'm gonna do the same for all the other metrics. So I'm gonna go for total distance first, high speed running, max speed. So for max speed, I'm actually gonna change that. So I'm not, I can't show the actual sum of max speed. That wouldn't make sense. So I'm gonna change it to show the maximum. So well, what this is gonna show me is the maximum uh, speed achieved in that time period that I select. Finally, accelerations, my high intensity zones, and the same with decelerations. So it's good to have this information as well, not only to see what you've done on each day, but in the same graph, you can also include the total value that, that you've done uh, on that week or that month or that selected time period. And I'm gonna just gonna change the, the size of the fonts and the size of the, the, the fonts of the value and the data labels, just so it just plays a bit uh, better the, the values that I want to reflect. Perfect. So for the last bit of my reports, I'm going to introduce right here a player image. So what I want is that when I select a different player, you can see that it changes the value according to, to the date and the player that I have selected. So one more thing that I want to include right here in the space I have left over is the player image. So this is not as simple as just inserting an image because I want it to be a dynamic visualization where I can select a different player and the image is going to be according to the player that I have selected. For this, please watch my other video. I'm going to leave the description, uh, sorry, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So just follow that link because it's a separate process. I don't want to make this video too long. So just follow that link in order to see how to include a dynamic visualization of player images in your player reports. So that's it for today. Make sure you check out the, the other video for the player images. And if you have any questions and comments, please just drop me a message. Thank you.